So I bought this lamp for just $20 in expensive Norway, and this little piece costs around $1. So yes, you can make spicy lighting affordable. Let's check it out in this video. Colored lighting will make your shots more interesting. As a cinematographer, just make sure that the light is credible, meaning that it actually fits the atmosphere of the scene. In our film, The Camera Hack, we used a red light to enhance the sci-fi touch of the film and introduce the personality of our hacker. The source was just a regular lamp with a red lamp shade. We did kind of the same effect in an after movie we made, but this time it was an RGB light made for filmmaking. Red is considered as an intense or even angry color that creates feelings of excitement or intensity. To see the full behind the scenes of this after movie, check it out on our channel. Today it's uh, supposed to be early morning. We also used an orange gel to simulate sunset in the camera hack. It's actually easier to create a teal and orange effect with gels. Okay, before we go out and shoot and do the fun part, let's quickly go through gels, diffusion paper, and bulbs. Because it's... Daniel? Daniel? Yeah? If you want to become a filmmaker, you need to know this, okay? Thank you. Okay, here it comes. You have color gels that make your light look spicy. You have the orange and blue gels that adjust the warmth of the light, or Kelvin as we call it. And you have the gels made to correct poor lamps. This can, for example, be a really cheap LED lamp you bought on eBay. You see, LED lamps come in different qualities. One of the measurements is CRI. The higher the CRI value, the more natural and accurate light the lamp produces. To the left is a film lamp from Aperture, and to the right we have a fluorescent bulb from eBay. The last paper I want to show you is diffusion paper. It's simply meant to spread the light and make the light soft. Then we have the bulbs, and they are even more important. This was the bulb we always used when I was young. Nowadays, LED bulbs has taken over the market. LEDs are great. They are affordable, they last for a long time, and they don't get that hot. However, their CRI value might be low, and some might flicker. So be sure to find some bulbs that are flicker-free and produce quite natural colors. These LED bulbs from IKEA has a CRI value above 80, which is okay. For professional shoots, I prefer CRI value over 90, and I know that IKEA has bulbs in that quality. It's just a bit more expensive. Aperture is one of the companies that manufactures lamps with high CRI values, and for an affordable price. Their brand new Aperture MW is surprisingly bright, and it works underwater as well. <laughs> it comes with custom fit color gels, a soft box, and presets for light effects. We'll probably have a more look into this lamp in a future video. Compared to the traditional bulb, LEDs come in different color temperatures, called Kelvin. You can get bulbs that are really cold, around 6000 Kelvin, looking like daylight, or LEDs that are warm. For example, this one from IKEA, which has around 2200 Kelvin. The bulb that I was used to as young are still on the market. They are called incandescent light bulbs. I think that was right. Incandescent? Incandescent. Yeah, so in Norwegian it's called glødepære, and that means directly translated glowing bulb. The good thing with those bulbs is that they have a really good CRI value, but they can get really warm and they don't last as long as LEDs. You also have the fluorescent lamps. This is a 5600 Kelvin bulb I bought on eBay. It's very strong and creates a soft light. I'm screwed now. But the CRI value is not that good, and bulbs like this might create flickering, like cheap LEDs. However, you can avoid this by adjusting the shutter speed of the camera. You just have to test it out. So, how can we use the gels, diffusion, and bulbs to pimp up our videos and films? Well, we need lamps. And instead of using the film lamps I usually bring with me, we'll go for the ones we find at home, which are much cheaper. They are of course not as practical as the film lamps, but you can do a lot with them. I will also add this black wrap to our kit. This is black aluminum foil, which helps us create interesting shapes with the lights. On film lamps, you have barn doors to do the same effect easier.
Our good friend Nicolina has her own YouTube channel and I could see the potential to pimp up her videos a little bit. And it was not just the lighting who needed some fixing, a couple of other things as well. Let's have a look. Okay, we are now at uh, Thomas and Nicolina's apartment and here we have Miss Bangin. Hello. <laughs> she has a YouTube channel where she films herself opening Pokemon cards. But what I got in the mail was a Steam Siege. Booster packs. Booster or, packs. Or surprise boxes or yeah, just anything Pokemon. Pikachu! Pika Pika. You created this corner uh, to film yourself. Yes. And the lights you're using is the, this one? Yeah, and I have this little like... Aperture thing? The aperture thing, yes. Ah. I have that one, but I can't find it. It's so small, <laughs> you, you know, it disappears all the time. I also use this makeup mirror sort of thing. So yeah. use that, where do you place this one? I use this as coverage because it's not very pretty. And I'll place this like there. And then you sit here? Yes, I do. Okay. If you put this in your hair and brush it out, your hair is going to be white. And I am just dying to try it out and see if it works. Okay. Uh, this light is quite cold, as you can see, it's a bit blue. Yeah. And this is orange. Yeah. And when you mix them together, it will create kind of a strange looking artificial okay. light. What so, if I use the other side, like that one? Is that better? Yeah, that's more like this one. The cool thing with this one is it's nice and it's nice as a practical, yeah. which is a, a lamp or a light you can have inside a frame to just make it look good. Oh my god, this is horrible! There's so much product in my hair! The next video you want to make is about these noodles. What's so special about this? Well, it's the noodle challenge. That's the uh, second strongest one, I believe. I think they tested it at hot ones. Ooh, that one's a hot one. I uh, figured I'd start with that one and then do the spicy one as well. Since it's about spicy food, it should be spicy lighting as well. First, I wanted to see if they had any lamps laying around that could work for this shot. It's still Christmas, eh? <laughs> uh, you have a lamp here? That looks a bit expensive. Maybe too expensive for this episode. We have this old antique lamp, <laughs> which I bought and uh, uh, I used this when I was a student. Uh, I used this when I was a student. <clears throat> okay. Uh, before putting up lights, we need to know the framing. What, what's outside of the frame? Uh, can you bring the uh, camera tripod? Uh, well, I don't have a tripod. I, um, I make my own tripod. Uh, there we go. Yes. It works, it works. It works. Ah, the Canon 550D. We have two 550Ds. This is mine. Well, now we can film in 3D. This is the well, angle, normal angle. Um, you, yeah, this is this is fine because I usually crop it. So. Well, afterwards. Yeah. With this camera, if you crop afterwards, it will it will be a bit grainy. But why do you crop? Because I want it closer in. Because there's what? too much of a mess around the table. Right but why don't you zoom? With this lens, when you zoom, you lose some light or aperture. The aperture on the kit lens, I think, is 3.5 when you are wide angle, and when you zoom in, it's about five, I believe. So we will zoom now, so we don't need to do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you see, it will be sharper. Okay. We just need more light, so that will what we'll bring up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this is the camera without the flip screen. <laughs> now it's not horizontal. Is it? Yeah. Well, it's on boxes. You think it it would be? But... Yeah, but this is an old apartment, <laughs> so it's, it's, well, the kitchen is crooked. We just use the camera strap. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, this turns off all the time. Oh, it's annoying. This camera is probably one of the best buys I've ever done. You know, my hair just raised up because it was so sharp and... <laughs> I used to love the Canon 550D. I still do that, but it's crazy how much the video function has improved since. Is there any focus picking on this camera? No? Like a zoom focus. Yes. Ooh, fancy. I saw that you had uh, ISO on auto, so I will put the ISO down to 800. Uh, then it will become darker, but we need to compensate with light. Okay. Because now it chooses a really high ISO, and then it will get grainy, not looking, good looking footage. Yeah, cameras, I yeah. need to learn. Something like... When you're filming yourself, you should start doing this. Just move yourself away from the background. You can make the background more blurry, and uh, separate yourself from the background. 
and also uh, remove the shadows. Let's move the camera a little bit. <laughs> okay, so let's get an overview of what we are actually doing and planning. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's go. Let's go. When you sit like this close to the wall, it will be hard to separate you from the background. And also when you have the lights really close as this, it's hard to hide them uh, outside the frame. Okay, so what we're doing now, we uh, move the desk, so she will become sharp, the background will become blurry. And when you zoom in, you will create also more shallow little field and make the background more blurry. Okay, let's put out some lights. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful time. lamp is finally yeah, getting yeah, yeah. useful. Oh. Try to make it a key, key light. Can you twist it around? <laughs> you say it was it cold? Ha it hasn't been used in a, in a while. By the way, if you like my cat sweater, I'm actually selling those in a store. It's my cat, and I also have one with the other cat. So yeah, <laughs> the link is in the description. The Pog? Pokemon coin. Pokemon coin. Oh, the first like, ever Tamagotchi. Well, it's a new edition, but it's the original one, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, you're all also quite close to this wall, so... Since this is a narrow, small room, it's easy to create shadows, so we'll make, have to make this more soft, the light. Uh, do you have some baking paper? <laughs> 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 what? Are you? It's Art by accident. This will make me make it a little bit more cozy, because it's warmer. Because what happens now is that the light will then spread around the paper and create a softer light because the light source will then become bigger. And the more away we put it from the lamp, the more soft it will be. I need to go now. Why? All the secret projects. Okay, before he continues, just look how bad the light is in this kitchen compared to the bulbs we are using. In other words, the bulbs we are using have a better CRI value. And now, let's see why Thomas is leaving. He's I'm going to uh, watch a football game and eat food. Uh, beef, probably. <gasps> Later. I need a hug. As I'm gonna leave now, I hope, Thomas, Brun, that you are going to take care of my lamp. That it does not come to any harm. I promise. I put my faith in you. Okay. Can we turn off, off the ceiling now? We don't have uh, that many places to, to mount the light, the lamp I have with me. But since this is so lightweighted, we can just use some gaffer tape to the wall. Remember, if, you have, if your paint is really bad, it will maybe rip the paint off. So just be careful. Yeah. To make the red stand more out, we'll add a contrast, a complementary contrast, and that's green. So we have to add one more lamp. Maybe we can... Actually, what we do, we'll uh, we try to hide it under you and putting up. And that's the key key light, which is the main light hitting her face, lighting her up. And then we'll have one lamp here lighting the background, and another one down here to also light the background. So this is red, this is green, and the key light is tungsten, that, like the natural uh, color to her face. And when you zoom in, the composition will be, will be more narrow, so we can actually hide the key light and those lights outside of the frame. That's our plan. Okay, when you put up all, the, all these lights, it can look really as different on the camera than in real life. Mm. So now we need to go and look into the camera so it looks good. The background is too bright and she, uh, she is too dark. Instead of Thomas's lamp as the key light, I'll use the $30 IKEA lamp with a more powerful tungsten bulb. Now we're more flexible with light as well. Okay. This is the strong bulb. Ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Always tell the talent that you're turning on the lights, especially the strong one. I didn't do that now, just for you guys, so you know. You can you always learn when you do mistakes. This is so. Close your eyes. Okay, okay, still bright. Still bright. Still very bright. This was 70 watts, and that's a lot. Thank you, Thomas. 40 watts. You can also buy dimmers. Um, Cheap ones that they connect to the power cord. I think this is better. Or what, Thomas? Yep. Pick-a-bee. Old one from Thomas, down here. Yeah! 
No, but this is a kit lens. It's okay for uh, outdoor shooting, but for things like this, where it's in small space and you're quite close to the background, it's better with a faster lens. But you know what? For this test, let's just show the difference from this lens and the Sigma lens because it was so much better. My favorite Sigma 1835. You have aperture 1.8, even though we zoom. This is now I'm recording with the kit lens and boom. Okay, so this was the starting point. Now, as, it, as the lens is faster, you can pull down the aperture to 1.8 and then also the ISO since it's faster. So we can pull it down to 400. So we need the camera higher up, make it in the eye level. Oh, we are so close now. Good lighting is the key to good cinematography. If I had time, I would add the Aperture M9 as a backlight and separate her even more from the background. Then we can mount it somewhere behind her and point it towards her. You can also place it in the frame as a practical. You just have to test and find your look. The sound recording is so important. If someone watches your channel for the first time, you got five or 10 seconds to prove them that they should watch the entire video. So a tip, put this as close as possible to your mouth. Um, I would have the plant and then I would place it like, sort of prop it up like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's try to make it even closer. Okay, it's recording. It's recording. Okay. So let's try to place it as close as possible. And then this one's the real Pikachu and this is um, Umbreon. It's my favorite Pokemon. Now talk. Uh, the same. Okay. Um, this is an ugly Pikachu, I got it off eBay, and uh, this is the real Pikachu, and this is um, Umbreon, my favorite Pokemon. Can you take it out and show it to the camera? The Umbreon? Just to see if it's, the lighting is good, still. Yeah. Great! Yeah, I think it's a wrap for us. We can go home and you can record. Yay! Okay? Yay! You know, actually, we managed to do it in one hour. One hour. Good. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Over the years, I realized how much colors do to our minds. It definitely triggers emotions. Good emotions. We need more of that. And as I think we have proven that it isn't hard to add more colors in our life, go out there and buy some colored balls, or gels, or even a disco ball. Put on some nice music and remind your friends and family that we are on this planet to have a great time. Thanks for watching. This was hopefully one of many light videos we'll make on this channel. To support what we do and influence our videos, become a Patreon by pressing here. Thanks for helping out Daniel, Nicolina and Thomas. Their channels are here and in the description. And links to some interesting behind the scenes we made are in the description and on our channel. I'll see you very, very soon. Hallgrav!